Carlisle, The Untold True Story. The Indian Wars in America are coming to a tragic end. It's the late 1870s, and legendary chiefs like Crazy Horse, Geronimo, and Cochise watch as their once proud Sioux, Apache, and Comanche tribes are herded into ever-shrinking reservations, the American Indian way of life is fast disappearing. Former Army Cavalry officer, Captain Richard Henry Pratt, had befriended and grown to respect the spirit and courage of these great chiefs. He knows their culture is destined for extinction. He has an idea, a big idea. In order to uplift the Native American, he firmly believes that you have to kill the Indian and save the man. Under authority of the U.S. government, he opens a school in 1879 for the sons and daughters of the chiefs who want their children to learn English, trade skills, and Euro-American customs. He calls it the Carlisle Indian Industrial School, an institution designed to elevate Indian youth by immersing them in the ways of the white man. He incorporates military discipline to tame their wild ways. The experiment proves controversial as the young Indians are forced to leave their families, cut their hair, give up their tribal clothing for uniforms, take anglicized names, and forgo their native language in favor of English. Some suffer deep depression, others run away, some die of white man's diseases, but not every student struggles. Several of Carlisle's young men take up the increasingly popular new sport of American football, being played by colleges like Harvard, Yale, Michigan, and Army. In the late 1800s, football is a violent, unregulated game, more like a brawl than a test of athletic ability. Kicking and punching are allowed. Pratt refuses to let his players compete unless they promise to never retaliate, even when they are hit in the face with punishing blows from their rivals. But the game grows ever more brutal. In one year alone, there are 21 deaths on the gridiron across the nation. After President Theodore Roosevelt threatens to shut down the sport, new rules are adopted to open the game up and help reduce the carnage. Flying wedges are outlawed. A first down requires 10 yards instead of five, and the forward pass is legalized, although if incomplete, it's a 15-yard penalty. In 1900, Pratt hires the man who would turn the Carlisle Indians into a football juggernaut, the legendary coach, Glenn Pop Warner. Warner and his Carlisle teams literally reinvent the game of football. He is quick to capitalize on the new rule allowing passing, the 15-yard penalty be damned, and makes football history with inventions like the cross-body block, the single wing, the reverse and double reverse, and even a hidden ball trick. But these innovations are nothing compared to the Carlisle Indians being the first to throw a spiral pass. The national press takes notice and no longer are Native Americans seen as savages. Carlisle's young men play like gentlemen. They outsmart and beat their opponents not only with guile and athleticism, but with their native stamina and courage. Sports reporters are hooked and their readers love it. They are the most dynamic team in college football. Wherever the Carlisle Indians play, stadiums are packed. Then in 1907, a half-breed Sac and Fox Indian from Oklahoma named Jim Thorpe shows up at the Carlisle track field and beats the school's best high jumpers. Thorpe wants to play football and convinces Warner to let him try some plays in practice. Thorpe runs around and past the entire defense not once but twice. Pop Warner knew that the team had its first real superstar, but before Thorpe's talents on the gridiron were realized, his remarkable track and field capabilities would take precedent. At the 1912 Stockholm Olympics, he won gold medals in both the pentathlon and the decathlon. Jim Thorpe was considered the greatest athlete of his time. When Thorpe, the hero, returns from Stockholm, Warner and the Carlisle team sense that an outright national championship is within their grasp. The majority stumbling block? The undefeated cadets of Army, led by a hard-nosed halfback named Dwight D. Eisenhower. 22 years after Wounded Knee, the Indians would face off against Army, the team representing the very institution that had massacred their ancestors in the final encounter of the Indian Wars. Could this disadvantaged team of American Indians beat their historic rivals on this new battlefield in the first athletic contest to ever be called the Game of the Century? This is the saga of a grand experiment called Carlisle, and a legendary coach who saw something special in a band of brave young Indian men at the center of an untold piece of American history. The story of the team that invented modern football and left a legacy for generations to come.